the sheep on his right, the goats on his left. Now, is that, is that our right or God's right? This is um, our outgoing theme, gospel passage, because you did it for me. You know, we wanted to start the new theme, um, which is, uh, Lord, I do believe... We wanted to... Thank you. And that too. We wanted to start that at the beginning of the academic year, anticipating the gospel according to Mark, which of course we start in the new liturgical year, which starts with the beginning of Advent next Sunday. So we're finishing our liturgical year, and um, I won't promise you won't hear this um, theme again, because you did it for me, our outgoing theme, but this is it. This is the passage. This is why we chose that theme, because you did it for me. I heard on the radio this week about this study where they told a group of people about a starving girl and then took up a collection. And then they told a group of people about that same starving girl and about how many other starving people there are in the world, and they took up a collection, and they got half as much as when they just told about the girl. And so at first you might think, well, yeah, it's because, you know, the heart and the head, this was all facts. But remember, this group also heard the story about the starving girl, this particular girl. But they only gave half as much. The way the researchers explained it, and I guess they did further research to figure this out, is that it wasn't a head-heart tension. It was a good-feeling, bad-feeling tension. And so the people who were just told about the little girl and then gave all this money, um, they, um, they had a good feeling because they were helping this poor little girl. So this group was being told about this poor starving girl and were getting a good feeling about how they were going to help her. But then they heard about all these other starving people in the world and they got a bad feeling. They got a bad feeling about how they couldn't even begin to make a dent in this huge problem in the world. And that bad feeling uh, vanquished that good feeling and the collection was even smaller, was half. I'll return to that in a moment with hopefully a little hope. But we can hear that story. We can also hear today's gospel story and think about the ways that we failed to um, feed those in need, to visit those in prison, et cetera, et cetera. If only we had known it was Jesus, huh? We would have done it. But today, I want to celebrate all the many ways in which we have encountered and served Jesus in others. When? When, you ask? Well, what about when so many of you went to St. Vincent de Paul and served dinner to people or breakfast to people in need? People mostly with, without homes, um, individuals, families. What about when some of you went to a storefront and shared a meal with teenagers without homes? What about when some of you went to downtown La Jolla where there's even hungry people there and, and worked with the ministry so others may eat to feed those who were hungry. What about all those people who made sandwiches and then shared them with people living on the streets in San Diego last winter? We, um, you might, if you didn't do it, you might not remember so the idea wasn't just to give food, but to sit down and share a meal with them, to eat with them. And, of course, Father John Paul lost his jacket, which Patty had given him then because somebody asked him for his jacket. And so, um, uh, and what about all those who, who got, were involved in the Stop Hunger Now event last year, packaging all these meals for people on the other side of the world? And then we found out later who it was, went to. Does anybody remember where that went? 
It was somewhere in Southeast Asia, I think. But um, you don't remember all those individual people we helped? The food bank, which we're now helping Good Sam with. Um, what about those times? When you asked, did um, I welcome a stranger? Well, when you prayed, voted um, in a way that respects the dignity of immigrants, perhaps? When you went to share that Ramadan fast-breaking meal with our Muslim brothers and sisters? When at Mass you welcomed a new person or reached out at Mass or somewhere else to people who seemed to be excluded from the group and feeling alone, reaching out to a roommate, to a family member, maybe not a stranger per se, but in that moment, a stranger to the community, a stranger to themselves, when you ask, did we clothe the naked? Well, I haven't seen too many naked people. I probably shouldn't have put that image in your mind lately. But um, um, we have put together these care packages a couple times this year, and we'll do it again uh, in the hall after Mass. Care packages for homeless socks and other warm things, hats and gloves. When did we heal you, Jesus, when you were sick? So many ways in which we brought, reached out to the sick, and especially we have our care ministry, that healing prayer circle, which also reaches out in other ways to those who are sick. Did we visit you in prison? I'm curious, does anybody here uh, regularly visit uh, prisoners? It's kind of a challenge. We have at least one person. It's kind of a challenge to get clearance. With students, it's hard because we, it takes you weeks to get clearance, and then you get clearance, and then your schedule changes the next quarter. But what about the time when you reached out to somebody who was a prisoner in their grief or their sorrow or their sadness or their anxiety and helped free them? What about all those other times that we reached out to Christ, the tutoring members of, of our community and former members in Haiti and the Peace Corps in Burundi and so many other ways in which we've reached out to those who need Christ's healing touch. Because you did it for me. There's no easy answer to those of us who are asking for involvement in our ministries, including fundraising. No easy answer to this study about, you know, people just don't want to give when you give them all the facts. Um, certainly, it helps to um, tell the story of that one starving girl, but then there's so many others' stories too, right? We're not just taking up a collection for this one person. We're not taking any collection for people today except for um, ourselves, the Newman Center. Um, the, um, there's no easy response to this, but we as Christians, we see everybody in the world and we see Christ. That's our calling, is to see Christ, to see the divine in everybody. So when we hear facts about um, one million or two million, whatever it is, people living with hunger, uh, with food insecurity, it's probably more than that in the world, um, those aren't just facts, but those are people, and those are people who carry the divine presence within. Those people are Christ. And so we're called to just continue to practice seeing Christ in one another, to see Christ in ourselves. We can even start there. Our um, Burundi Border Barrio outreach project with Good Sam is a way for us to see Christ in others. This is a, this is a project that isn't just about um, giving to people, and it's let alone about giving to people what we think they need and haven't even asked. 
but it's about encountering people in need, developing relationships with them, um, about um, study, about prayer, about encounter. We were talking at our social justice committee meeting the other day about, um, you know, Father Miguel already has a list, at least in his mind, about if, if we're able to develop this sister relationship with the parish of Mexicali that we want to, he already has a needs list. And Jasmine said, well, we have our needs list too for prayer, um, for tamales. <laughs> and so we can share our needs list with our brothers and sisters in Mexicali. And we have a really great all-community project today in which we can encounter Christ. And that's our, our annual giving tree party next door. We encounter Christ in cookies, and we encounter Christ in, um, in putting together these care packages for the homeless, and we encounter Christ in taking an ornament off the giving tree, which says, for example, there's um, a boy somewhere four to six, year old, six years old in San Diego who needs a Christmas present. And, and we can take an ornament and bring back that gift to be delivered. Because you did it for me, because you did it for me, then what? Have you ever wondered what's the end of that sentence? Because you did it for me, Jesus says to us, then come inherit the kingdom. Inherit eternal life. And for us Christians, that means right here and now too, right? Beginning right here and now. The giving itself is a receiving, isn't it? Giving and seeing Christ in others, that's what being human is about. That's what makes us more and more fully human. So we're already getting our reward to become more and more fully human, to walk around this world and see Christ in one another. Today is a day on the Feast of Christ the King when we also turn to Jesus and say, Jesus, because you did it for us, because you poured out your life for us, because you showed us the way, because you gave us everything, because you showed us how to love, because you have drawn us up into your new life, because of that, then we give you thanks.